Hello and good evening everyone. I am Dr. Siddharth Johan and uh, I am going to talk on high positive pressure during cataract surgery. First of all, watch this video. This video is showing high intraocular pressure with the shelling of anterior chamber and eye is trying to prolapse out. Most of us might have experienced this condition when this condition is because of vitreous of thirst that is called as high positive pressure. There are various conditions causing high positive pressure during cataract surgery. Some are benign while some are critical. Among benign condition, one is tight lid speculum. So before starting your surgery, make sure that eyelid speculum is not too tight to exert undue pressure on eyeball. Then excessive squeezing can also cause high positive pressure while operating. It occurs because of pain sensation and movement of orbicularis ocular muscle that happens because of incomplete block. So it can be minimized by just giving an additional block either in the form of peripalbar or subterranean block. Here, topical anesthesia won't work. Then excessive fluid collection in the pouch of eye drape actually pulls eyelid on one side and exert pressure on the eyeball. So you have to take care of this condition too. Then there are some conditions like thyroid ophthalmopathy and dermatomyositis where we get soft tissue swelling. Uh, in these cases, even if small amount of drug when injected in peribulbar space can raise intraorbital pressure. So it is always better to do such cases under topical anesthesia. When large volume of anesthetic drug injected in peribulbar or retrobulbar space, that will naturally increase intraorbital pressure and that will cause high positive pressure while operating. This can be avoided by just give giving uh, giving digital uh, massage that will make eyeballs softer and surgery will become simpler. Sometimes you may get retrobulbar hemorrhage uh, while giving peribulbar or retrobulbar block. Uh, it is an important condition uh, that causes high positive pressure while uh, operating. So it is necessary to recognize this condition. If it is small, it, simple digital compression can stop it then and there and you can continue your surgery. But if it is large and progressive, you have to abandon your surgery. Uh, sometimes lateral catheter is done to decrease pressure on optic nerve. IV manitol is started and surgery is postponed for a period of minimum one week. Then a critical condition causing high positive pressure can be a fluid misdirection syndrome or a supracordial hemorrhage. As shown in this figure, in fluid misdirection syndrome, there is misdirection of fluid from anterior chamber into the posterior vitreous cavity through the defect in either journal or through the defect in poster capsule that will increase volume of vitreous that will result in vitreous upthrust, shallowing of anterior chamber, raised intraocular pressure and the eye actually becomes rock hard. This is slowly progress to condition and typically painless. What are the strategies to be adopted uh, in this syndrome? As soon as you get the hint, you have to stop. Close all the incisions as soon as possible and wait. What can be the waiting period? You can wait for an hour or two. And while waiting, you have to start IV manitol. Most of the time, condition improves. That means eyeball becomes softer. Continue your surgery if condition improves. But if it doesn't, do be scan to confirm your diagnosis. Call VR surgeon for pars plana vitrectomy. It is actually a decompression procedure that will control intraocular pressure, make eyeball softer so that you can continue your cataract surgery. Another critical condition is supracordial hemorrhage. In this figure, you can see the progression of supracordial hemorrhage from normal looking eye to the expulsive cordial hemorrhage. And here you can see loss of red reflex in just few seconds. Same can be seen in this video. Here, surgeon finds it difficult to put IOL even in the bag due to high positive pressure and the red reflex is getting replaced by dark shadow. So what is supracordial hemorrhage? It is potentially devastating but rare complication of intraocular surgery. There is accumulation of blood between choroid and sclera. Blood comes from long or short posterior ciliary It is rapid in onset, very painful and dark shadow at the back of eye is visible. It can be graded as localized where you get shallow choroidals then large, where there is large choroidal detachment called as kissing choroidals 
an expulsive coronal uh, hemorrhage where there is expulsion of all intraocular content through the surgical incisors. Risk factors can be advanced age, hypertension, medications like aspirin, warfarin, high myopia, aphakia, high intraocular pressure, previous intraocular surgery, retrobulbar hemorrhage, general anesthesia, posterior capsular rind, conventional ECC, long surgical time, post-operative hypotony, post-operative cuffing and straining conditions. Then how to identify? There are some intraoperative signs like uh, anterior chamber shallowing, loss of red reflex which is getting replaced by dark shadow, raised intraocular pressure, eye actually becomes firm, bulging of posterior capsule and ultimately expulsion of all intraocular content which is seen in expulsive choroidal hemorrhage. So what to do when it initiates? This is very important. Early detection is most important at the first step in the management. Anterior chamber can be formed by putting visco quickly apply tight and firm sutures to close the wound. Incisions are sutured and surgery is postponed. After postponing the surgery, high intraocular pressure is managed by anti drugs like RV mannitol, oral acerizolamide, topical and systemic steroids are given to control inflammation and promote clot liquefaction. Topical cycloplegics and oral analgesics are given for pain control. Then B scan is done to confirm the diagnosis, to check whether it is localized or large because our management and prognosis depend on it. In localized supracordial hemorrhage, wait for a period of weeks or a month for spontaneous resolution. There is no need of surgical intervention when surgery is needed in large supracordial hemorrhage. Posterior draining sclerotomy is done in most of the cases in 7 to 14 days when B scan shows signs of clot liquefaction. You can get good visual outcome in localized supracordial hemorrhage while prognosis is guarded in large supracordial hemorrhage and eye is actually gone in expulsive cordial hemorrhage as evisceration becomes necessary. What can be done to prevent it? Prefer topical anesthesia except in the patients who are having excessive squeezing reflex. Better, we can block such patients. Self-selling incisions are very important to avoid intraoperative as well as post-operative hyperbole. Control intraocular pressure prior to surgery. Control blood pressure prior to surgery. Control cough and straining condition prior as well as after surgery. Stop anti drug minimum three days prior to surgery and resume it two days later. So finally, we have got keys to tackle the incision uh, situation. Prevention is always better than cure. Identify the risk factors by proper pre-operative evaluation. Early recognition of alarming signs while operating and pause at right time is very, very important. If it is fluid misdirection, go ahead after IOP is under control. If it is supracordial hemorrhage, you have to wait for 7 to 14 days. In this way, your patients and presence of mind will do 50% of your job and rest will be done by your luck. So I wish you all the best luck. And I thank you all for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Siddharth, sir. It was a very nice talk. And we will do panel discussion after our third talk so that we will not become uh, short of time before. So I request Dr. Aparna Gupta.